Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. And I don't know about you this morning, but I am glad to still be in it. Oh, praise his holy name. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hoovering over the waters. And I want to preach on the subject this morning. Who are you listening to? Who are you listening to? Let's pray. Our gracious, our eternal God, to whom the earth and the fullness there belong, and all that dwells within. My gracious God, I come to you humble this morning. First of all, to say thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for allowing me to continue to go on during this day. And my gracious God, I just give you all the praise, honor, and the glory. And God, I just ask you to hide Reverend McCoy behind the cross at this time. And you come forward, God, so that the people of God won't say, Reverend McCoy, you did a good job, but God, you showed up again and you showed out. And God, I just ask you to purposely locate me to the yielding of your anointing at this time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Who are you listening to? My beloved, this word this morning, focus on the source of authority for your life. Highlighted in this word is distinction between the sons and daughters of light and those of darkness. We must understand that children of darkness claim to be of God, but their actions show them to be true sons and daughters of Satan. Church membership and family connections will not make us children of God. Your true father is the one you obey. The question comes this morning, who are you listening to? My beloved, inside every believer, there is a war going on. The spirit is battling against the flesh. The spirit is our connection to God, and the flesh connects with Satan. Upon acceptance of Christ as a believer, you invite the spirit of God to move into your house into your life, and to take up residence in your mind and your heart. However, now, Deacon Curtis, the problem is there is another fellow already living there. <laughs> and he's called flesh. Now, as the new man, the Holy Spirit, moves in the old man, flesh declares, I shall not be moved. My beloved, the sad thing is that many Christians will not admit that there is a problem inside of them. They make excuses for their behavior and conduct by saying, I know I'm wrong, but God knows my heart. My beloved, in reality, that is simply confession without repentance. But to deal with Satan... You must first admit that there is a problem. Secondly, you must come to grip with the fact that it is not an intellectual problem. It is, in fact, spiritual warfare. Oh, Deacon Curtis, you need to put on the whole armor of God. In a word, you must feed your mind on God's word. Strength comes from our diet. Followed up with focused prayer. My beloved, I am convinced that we become what we eat and what we focus on. You see, through the word and prayer, strength and courage are received to put the old man out of the house. Yet, there is a problem. And this brings me to the first point of the text this morning. Indirect rebellion. My beloved, Rebellion is a serious biblical principle that many take lightly. 
In addition to aggression and passive rebellion, believers must also come to grip with direct and indirect rebellion. God has placed the church on this earth as stewards for the soul, offering provision while here and a departing station when life is over. Make no mistake about it now, it's God's church. We are all equal in essence, but different in functions. That means we have dedicated areas of authority. Operating within your dedicated area of authority provides direction, power, courage, and an anointing. Order and structure have been set up in the church and at the home. Person whom God has placed in authority serve only as instruments to carry out God's will. My beloved, the anger of God is initiated whenever you touch or rebel against those he placed in delegated areas of authority. We call that indirect rebellion. Oh, that's why the scripture says in 1 Chronicles 16 and 22, touch not my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Even with your attitudes, as a man think it, so is he. For an example, a transportation company has at least three levels. Dispatcher, bus or truck driver, and mechanic. All three have driver's license, hopefully now, but the driver license do not qualify or give them permission to operate in an unauthorized area. Oh, even if your ego suggests that you are all that a bag of chips and a Coke, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I know I'm talking to somebody. My beloved, there are several things you need to know about Satan based on Ezekiel 28, 14. As, an, as an angel, his ministry description was to light up the morning while maintaining a seat in the holy mountain of God. He was an anointed angel. There is more in his origin, Deacon Curtis. He was the seal of perfection. Ezekiel 28, 12 says, Son of man, take up a lament concerning the king of Tyre and, and, and say to him, this is what the sovereign Lord says. You are the model of perfection, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. He was one of a kind without peer. No angel could come close to Lucifer. He was full of wisdom. My beloved, Scripture indicates that God endowed Satan with supernatural wisdom. Now, it was not complete wisdom. The choice was given to Satan as to how he used the wisdom. My beloved, here's where the rubber meets the road. The problem or chaos we experience in our lives, relationship and ministries, is sometimes a birth child of our choices are born. How we use gifts of God is the number one believer's problem. Read verse 12 when you get a chance. Satan was perfect in beauty. Oh, some of us think we are so bad, but we can't come close to the beauty of Satan. This word says that he was the most beautiful creature that God created. Satan had physical beauty. He didn't have horns, long tail, a red suit, and a pitchfork. Oh, hold on. But all that he had going for himself was really going against him. Why? I'm glad you asked me. Because he could not handle his blessings. Let me tell you something this morning. It is sad when your gifts bless others and you receive no spiritual benefit. My beloved, there are blessings in store waiting for you. 
and you keep flunking the test. You want to move in management on your job. You want to increase in your ministry. But have you taken the authority test? Are you currently operating under authority? Oh, I can see you smiling. But is that a passive rebellion? Is that smile they cover up for the seed of discord you planted and the frown in your heart? Satan is a fallen angel doomed for hell with no possible chance of retrial or pardon. Oh, for Satan and his demons, it's over. <laughs> he was tried and convicted for rebellion by God. Rebellion caused Satan to be kicked out of heaven. Jesus said in Luke 10, 18, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. My beloved, don't let rebellion stop you from getting to heaven. Don't listen to Satan. If you do, you will fall like he did like lightning. My beloved, God has gifted and created each of us on purpose and with purpose. But now the problem is we cannot advance in our ministries or careers because of rebellion, pride, and disobedience. Satan fell because he flunked the spiritual maturity test. Satan refused to operate inside his delegated area of authority. Oh, that's many of our problems right there. We refuse to operate inside delegated area of authority. That's indirect rebellion. Well, this brings me to the second point of the text. Not only indirect rebellion, but Satan's primary tool, doubt. <laughs> doubt is Satan's primary tool. Doubt is to be uncertain in opinion. Or belief to be undecided. What is doubt? Doubt is to be inclined to unbelief. What is doubt? Doubt is to be fearful, suspicious, resulting in a lack of trust and confidence. My beloved, there is a problem. What you see when you look at me is not me. What you see is the house that I live in created by divine hands of God. In Genesis 2 and 7a, the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. Oh, keep reading though. Genesis 2, 7b says, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. Well, in a word, God created the house and placed man in the house. My beloved, when struggles and trouble comes, pain and physical illness, Satan does not want you. He's trying to get at the one in the house. It is not the house that is the problem. It is the one that's living in the house. We are many times the creation of our own worst problems. Oh! If I could go somewhere and leave me behind, apostle, I would have it made. <laughs> but everywhere I go, I show up, and that's where the problem begins. Now, the suggestion here is doubt is the source that interrupts our relationship with God. And dysfunctional behavior is the result. When the relationship with God is hampered or broken, the soul cannot be neutral. We are spiritual beings. The problem is the house can be cared for, but the person living in the house might go unattended. My beloved, be prayerful as I reinstate the problem. The theological situation is that of a misdiagnosis. Pastor McCoy, how is that possible? Well, whenever the focus is on the outer man alone and not the inner man, the diagnosis will always be incorrect. 
my beloved, dysfunctional behavior begins whenever our relationship with God is interrupted. My beloved, at this critical moment in this sermon, allow me to, to, to a moment to drive home a center theme if I could. You and the house are not the same. <laughs> the house body is a, a accumulation of dust bits constructed by the hands of God to give you a place to live as you journey on this side. The real you is the soul that lives in the house. My beloved, let me tell you how Satan works. He begins with an innocent volley of half-truths and doubt. Just tossing thoughts to and fro in, in your mind. At first, it's easy. It's fun. He lures us by inviting us to play in areas that we are weak in. He makes things attractive. Satan knows about each of us to, well, and what it takes to temper us. He knows what it takes to put a smile on your face. So he used that to tempt you. Can I park here, Deacon Curtis, for a minute? Come on. There's no harm in it. That's what he said. There's no harm in it. Come play with me a little while. Nobody will miss you. Nobody will see you. Nobody is looking. This is neither good nor bad. So you find yourself playing with Satan. And you come away feeling that wasn't so bad. Understand now. Every time you play with Satan, you are separated from the Lord. And you expose your soul to a con contaminated area with no protection. When you play with Satan, your, your immune system is low. You made it back and you think no damage is done. But the soul has been exposed and disease set in. Then he shows up again and you play again. But each time he takes you a little further and the playing time is longer and longer. Before you know it, you have lost your way. It begins with a Sunday and Wednesday night. And now it's been 90 days since you've been in study of worship. You began with happy hours once a week. Now it's happy days and a fifth of day. You began with a joint for the fun of it. Now it's an addiction and the pain is real. You started out with the night with the boys and girls and now your happy home is gone. Oh, remember, Satan is cunning. He's smart. He got a triple PhD in deception. My beloved, neither Adam nor Eve could have willfully disobeyed and rebelled against God, except they had already separated themselves from God by their own lack of trust. Adam and Eve failed to believe and trust the word of God. Therefore, God for them was no longer God. So then the effects of their actions must not be mistaken for the cause. Their disobedience took place in their doubt. Their willfulness and self-assertion, the essence of their sin, simply the manifestation. The public revealing is the result a prior act, doubt in the mind. Remember, sin begins in the mind. Lack of trust by the creature for the creator is doubt. Once doubt was placed in Eve's mind, the growth product was unfaithfulness, which led she and Adam away from God's word by the serpent deceit. It should be clear that disobedience is the mature child of doubt. Adam and Eve 
would never have dared oppose God's authority unless they had doubt in God's word. Well, my beloved, this brings me to the third and final point of the text. Indirect rebellion, Satan primary to doubt, and finally, don't doubt God's word. My beloved, <clears throat> when you doubt God's word, you thereby forfeit trust in God. For what can be worse than to disobey God and obey Satan? Oh, who are you listening to? My beloved, understand that when you doubt God's word, then God ceased to be God for you. We must believe the word of God in context and not promote the proof text. Oh, the record says that before God's word fail, heaven and earth shall pass away. Oh, each morning if you are able to wake up, get up and see the sunlight come tiptoeing across the mountain sky. You know God's word still stands. Don't doubt God's word. Oh, your protection is in the word. Look at John chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Oh, whenever you doubt, not only do you doubt the creator, but your divine protection stands in jeopardy. You are then also doubting Jesus. Well, my beloved, I got to get out of here now. <clears throat> but uh, I have decided that I'm going <laughs> to trust in the Lord. Oh, because... I love him. He brought me. I said, he brought me. I am going to trust in the Lord because he delivered me from the evil one. He healed my sick body. He set my soul free. He, he, he made a way out of no way for me. Oh, he, he fed me when I was hungry. <laughs> he, he gave me water when I was thirsty. He, he put clothes on my back when I was naked. Mm -hmm. He put a roof over my head when I was homeless. He, <laughs> He put money in my pockets when I was broke. Oh, don't you doubt God's word. Oh, oh, I decided through my relationship with him to trust him. Oh, the reason why I trust him is because I know he loved me. And I know too much about him. And you sure enough can't make me doubt him. Who? Who? I said, who are you listening to? Are you listening to Satan? Are you listening to God? I come to tell you, you need to listen to God. Satan didn't build this earth. The Bible says the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to the Lord not Satan. So I'm going to serve God. Oh, do you know God? <laughs> do you know him? Well, I come to tell you, if you're sick, he's a chief physician. Oh, if you're in trouble, <laughs> he's a chief lawyer. Oh, he's a lawyer, Deacon Curtis, in the courtroom. He's never lost a case. <laughs> he's never lost a patient. And guess what? He'll never lose you. Oh, God bless you. God bless you today. If there's one this morning who
who don't know the Lord and who has been listening to Satan you can listen to God right now listen to his word his word says if you confess with your mouth and believe that he died and he got up his word say then you shall he didn't, he didn't say you might or you ought to be or let me think about it he said you shall be saved stop listening to the wrong voices stop listening to Satan listen to God and when you listen to God you listen to the right one when you listen to God he gonna give you the right instructions oh praise his name God bless you God loves the cheerful giver as stated in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7 if this church has been a blessing to you and God has placed in your heart a desire to give here are a few different ways for you to do so first you can go to the church website at sightmarkbaptist.org click on the donations tab at the top and follow the prompts you will be directed to our donations page which will give you the options to donate by debit card or PayPal account. Secondly, you can visit us in person at 4118 State Highway 34 East. That's Ridgeway, South Carolina. Someone will be available Tuesday through Fridays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Due to COVID-19, we are practicing all social distancing guidelines, which includes the wearing of masks and other face coverings. Please abide by these guidelines along with us. Thirdly, you may mail your offering in to the church. Address it to St. Mark Baptist Church, 4118 State Highway 34 East. That's Ridgeway, South Carolina, 29130. Thank you in advance for your support of St. Mark Baptist Church. God bless.